Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're wondering. What is true? And what is false? The Witch Queen is an unsettling mystery. <laughs> our biggest foe, Sabathun, has our grandest tool, the light. It's paying off narrative. Dude, she's gonna Nova bomb way back in Destiny 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here to we know that cutscene. How do we stop this? The stakes in the universe are rising, and it's the greatest challenge that we've ever faced. We're shedding that dogma of light equals good, darkness equals good. Go to captions? We're really entering the mists and trying to discern what's in front of us and what's lurking just oh. underneath the surface. What is your truth now? There are a lot of bombshells in the Witch Queen narrative. And that's just scratching Worms? the surface of what we're going to get into this year. I love Joe, Joe Blackburn. Light in the darkness. Witch Queen and Season of the Risen is chapter one in the beginning of the end for the light and darkness saga. We're really, really getting to the core of what it means to be a guardian. We are looking at and asking big questions about the light and darkness. We have a big bad that we've been anticipating for a really long time coming back in the, in the form of Savathun. Savathun's had a hand in most of the major conflicts that we've been involved with. We've heard about Sabathun for years and just bits and pieces, and then like you see it slowly building over seasons until we come to this huge critical point. Yeah, you guys Sabathun's been baiting no us. Longer just someone you hear about. She's not just interfering in little ways. She's now ready to take center stage. Sight. Yep, garage. One, two, three. Uh, Sabathun, she's larger than life. We wanted to make her feel imposing and very regal and dancing through motion. Yo, the, the garage. Us a fresh start. She's yeah. very manipulative. She is very ethereal, but she also has like that creepiness to her as well. She promised she'd help Yo, us out. Clean the garage, Here's my guy. The problem that's coming our way. But the reality of the situation is Sabathun is only on Sabathun's side. We've outlived our purpose, and it is to Sabathun's benefit to wipe us off that chessboard. She's lived among us. She has played us for fools. She knows us inside and out. And she's been a step ahead of us, like, the whole way. So how do you beat someone like that? It isn't too late. You can still be forgiven. Be careful. I'll, I'll hold, hold you, you to it. it. In order to beat Sabathu, you need to understand... Oh, I love Joe. Here we go. Her throne world is a yep, manifestation cup. of Savathun's own personality, which is in Witch Queen going through a transformation through the light. She has these areas that she's kind of trying to shun and push away. Oh man, you know, look at the swamp. Areas. It's much more atmospheric. It's very dense. It's very claustrophobic. Wow. It's spooky. Raid? Then when you make your way into the Lucent Hive area, it's a lot more open and broad. It's definitely brighter. It's definitely more lively. We want people to look at it like an impressionist painting, something that's very pretty from far away, but as you get closer, it's not really what it seems. It's it's very unsettling. Yeah. You're looking at shapes, you're looking at these things within the world, and you're not entirely sure what they are, and you have to get close and you have to investigate. What's really gonna be exciting for players is that they're gonna get to play that part of psychic detective, trying yeah. to solve the yeah. mysteries of the throne world. Oh, that was a rally flag. Witch Queen campaign, I think, is probably the most ambitious campaign we've made in a very long time. We're building the Definitively Destiny campaign, so leaning into the journey you can find in exotic missions or uh, the Yo, mechanics hops. you might find in a dungeon. You have to kind of think your way through. Oh, you hive symbols. Out, like, hey, what do I need to do next in order to get to the end of this? We've got Sabathun, right? The Queen of Lies. So this campaign is full of surprises. Sabathun has all these abilities, and you got to make sure that all of the abilities of the bosses would be something worthy of her. And as I kept thinking about this, you know, I felt like I was really becoming. Sabathun. Dude, those enemies look crazy. Classic, added the legendary, legendary campaign, which is called 1360. It's not for the faint of heart. 
it's gonna be loaded with these moments that are gonna be frustrating, almost like teeth gnashing, but when you get through those encounters, you're gonna feel like really accomplished. Double reward. Double loot! As people who have worked on raids and dungeons before, being able to broaden that experience for any kind of player who comes in is really We get important. double loot? If the Witch Queen is- We're doing hard content? Fantasy and journey. Then Season of the Risen is that same detective throwing on their flak jacket and defending Earth from the Hive Guardians and the Lucent Hive. And Double Sabathun blues! When Sabathun shows up on our doorstep with the light, the first person to lend us help is Keitel. Keitel! You want us to hit them. I need us to hit them. She's got this light suppressing technology that the Cabal were using in Season of the Chosen, and now she's going to help us use that against the Lucent Hive. When you're working with Kaya Tall, she has a different approach. It's not about asking questions. Can we get it's that about gun? Getting in there and extracting. We don't really understand what happened when Savathun actually was able to take the light. And so the campaign and season of the risen in many ways is. Yo, that looks that cool. What was that? That was like a stop relic or something. To be on the throne world. And Savathun poses an existential threat to. Did you see those blue highlighted hive? Has an undead army. In fighting the Lucent Brood, this isn't our first time in the game fighting other light bearers, but it is the first time that we'll be facing other light bearers that have much more relentless motives. Yep, banner when shield. You look at these hive guardians, and when they do their abilities, you immediately make that connection like, oh, they are using my powers against me. As soon as we yep, see the knight pop its super and it has two shields you immediately are Ooh. like oh yeah i see that connection and then it's like <laughs> and then you're like it hits you with those things and then you're Damn. Yeah, it's just a, an amazing experience the guardians yep, stop mechanic kind of like fire team that you're fighting against they got every class represented the acolyte when that character casts does very similar things by dodging player, like, throwing the knife arc wizard the sparks go out it's ready oh, to yes. go. Ah, uh, yes. Smart about it, if you're not paying attention, Wizard's got electricity you are now. essentially going to have to play that fight over again. If you're successful in taking down one of these hive units that are wielding the light, you actually have to go up and kill their ghosts. That was like one of my favorite things that we were able to do in this game is just that moment where you crush Grab the, the ghost. ghost. Bang. Kind of this moral dilemma. A ghost is your companion, and now suddenly you have one in your hand, and you're about to crush it. The first time that happens, you're like looking at your hand like, I can't believe what I've just done. Am I doing this? Should I be doing this? I have a ghost. Yeah, like, exactly. What, what, what is, is this going <laughs> That's cool. Sabathun and her Lucent Brood are the most dangerous enemies we've faced so far. And so we're going to need better, more powerful weapons and tools yeah. to fight against that threat. Yeah. We did a bunch of work early on looking at various different types of weapons we could add to the sandbox. We wanted to introduce a special weapon archetype that was effective more at a middle range, but also had these kind of additional roles associated with it. The yep. glaive is yep, a glaive. projectile weapon, and it is a shield, and it's a melee weapon. We wanted to keep that experience in first person. It has an immediacy that you don't really get when you're using a sword because the camera is so much further back. Because this is I like those combos. a projectile weapon with a slower moving projectile, the onus of skill on aiming these weapons is about leading and compensating for the speed of the projectile and anticipating that. If so it actually really does decent damage. And one of your teammates dies somewhere out in the open where you normally wouldn't be able to get to them. You can bring that shield up and actually get the revive and then fall back. Oh, that's Glaves cool. Originate with it's Sabatoon a shield too. Trying to steal an extremely powerful weapon for her own use. And players will use the weapon crafting recipes that they find throughout the campaign in order to reconstruct this incredibly powerful and incredibly ancient weapon. When you put together your glaive in the campaign, you just get a taste that that's what you want to do for the rest of the weapons that you get. Weapon crafting lets you target a specific role and go and build that, and you know how long it's going to take you to get there, and you get exactly the thing that you want. I really want to see what people do with it and like the feedback I like that, that we're UI. get and people sharing all of the things that they're doing. With you can pick system. perk you're by perk. Your guardian, and you want to be able to shape your guardian into what you want them to be. And this gives we're gonna have to watch that back. To continue to do that. 
This is a, a really big season for weapons in particular. We've got eight brand new exotics. Oh, the worm. The Osteo Striga exotic submachine gun. This is something which Guardians have made, but it's modeled after. We're gonna need this. So, like, Pause that. Malice, How much materials did that cost? Swarms of tiny homing projectiles that land on a target and then explode in this poison burst. We have an exotic machine gun where the whole idea is be the Colossus. You can launch a barrage of up to 20 homing missiles. It's a yep, AC-130 inbound. On it's Wardcliff on it's crack. Glaive for each class this time, and the exotic perks tie deeply into the mechanics of the classes. I think they're going to be really cool additions to build crafting. We've got, you know, the usual suite of raid weapons, destination, activity, seasonal. I recounted up this morning, I think it's about 50 new weapons. 50 new weapons? Have you just gave me a chub. For each class, totaling I'm gonna hold you to that. One I'm gonna count them! Titan Stasis Exotic. Cast your barricade, and instead of, you know, this Traveler's Light and the Rally Barricade, you create a giant wall of ice. Even though this thing is massive, you still get all the benefits of Rally Barricade. That's a new Titan Exotic. Warlock. Void exotic. We called them the devouring rift legs because oh, no. we wanted empowering rift to feel like it had a place in endgame content the way that healing rift does. Empowering rift doesn't heal you. Well, what if it did? Oh no. In season 16, you're gonna see they buff a devour revamp to the void oh, no. across all three classes. This is a huge update and will allow players to build craft in ways oh, that yeah. they've never done before. One of the things we wanted to We're do gonna need to is watch that again. Pause those. Set of verbs like we did with stasis. Anyone can run suppressors now. I think that's a pretty cool that's thing probably, to be. I'm going to be running suppressor yeah. grenade. Oh, yeah. We love suppressor grenades. <gasps> it works. Like you were the you can suppress you them. Like you were the night stuff. <laughs> like you were that tractor cannons coming out, boys. Titan. So you're going to see things like. Bastion, a new Titan aspect where you take your big old Sentinel shield. Everybody always asks me why I run suppressor nades. It's going to apply over shield to you and your buddies. My oh, yes. aspect is probably Child of the Old Gods. As this warlock controlling space and time, I'm able to rip a hole into another dimension. This was going to look cool. Pull out this little like sentient black hole. Whenever I target an enemy, my little black hole buddy is going to fly over oh. there and start draining their life force. The Void oh, 3.0 update is really setting the stage for how we're thinking about updating subclasses for the rest of the year. We're going to extend this philosophy to solar. Dude, Warlock's crack! Solar obviously is going to be Poor about burning, but there's this other component to solar, and that's healing. Arc, Poor hunters. Arc is all about changing. It's all about lightning, direct attacks, quickness. We're going to take the fantasies that you know and love today. We're going to embellish them. So what you'll see is like all of the new abilities, all the new actions you take, reinforce that to the core. Hunter's Please debuff must be about. broken. Witch Queen is very much the culmination of the last six to seven years of just destiny altogether. And really, this is starting the road to the final showdown. But things aren't necessarily just dark and light anymore. There's a lot more nuance in the game. It's going to be a real fight. Players have something that they're really going to be challenged by. They didn't even show the Hunter exotic because it's probably broken. Like, I'm excited. <laughs> you guardians are so clever. Aren't you? <laughs> From the drone world to the campaign to the customizable build crafting, it all comes together to make Destiny feel really new and fresh. We've got more Destiny coming this year than any other year before. It's one of the most ambitious releases we've ever put together, and the team is firing on all cylinders. Tell me, Guardian, what do you think you're going to do?